Okay, so in this video, we're going to be talking about rolling motion and conservation of energy with rotation. So I'm going to start with rolling motion. And in rolling motion, if we just imagine a wheel and it's rotating with some angular velocity omega, and we look at the center of the wheel, let's say it's a uniform wheel on the ground, then there's going to be some velocity of the center of mass of the wheel, where V sub cm is the so-called translational velocity of the center of mass. And so the question then is, what is V cm in terms of omega, the angular velocity, and r, the radius of the wheel. So in order to figure this out, well, we have to figure, well, how far would it go in some amount of time? So that brings us to this idea of our arc length. Say, let's call some length of this arc s. So s is our arc length. And so the wheel will have traveled some distance s in a time t. And so more specifically, we could write that the velocity of the center of mass, vcm, is equal to ds dt, the time rate change of that arc length. And remember that arc length is just r times theta in radians. Um, and so we can then write d dt of r theta and r is a constant, so this becomes r times d theta dt, and d theta dt should look familiar, and that's going to be then just equal to omega. So that leads us to the result that the velocity of the center mass of the wheel is equal to the radius of the wheel times the angular speed of the wheel, which makes sense because a larger wheel with the same angular speed will go um, have a center of mass that goes faster than one that has a smaller radius. So another question that we ask um, with rolling motion um, is going to be, what is the total velocity, so the velocity of a point on the rim of a rolling wheel? So in this case, we have to look at our vectors. So we want to say that our total velocity for a point on the rim of the wheel, say if we look up here, some point here, P, well, it's going to have the translational velocity of the center of mass, plus it's going to have its tangential velocity of that particular point on the wheel, so V sub T. And so that's our general result, but we have to analyze this recalling that both of these are vectors, so we'll be doing vector addition. And we want to recall that the tangential velocity of a point on the wheel, v sub t, is also equal to r omega, as is the center of mass velocity, as we just proved. So using these, we can now draw a picture of a wheel. So if I go ahead and I draw a larger wheel here, and again, it's rolling with some omega, and here's the ground, then at the center, right, there's no tangential velocity. So that would just be V sub cm of that one point. We'd watch it move in space. But let's say that we were watching the point at the top up here. Well, at the top, every single point on this wheel has a V sub cm, the center of mass ten, um, motion of the center of mass. So it would have V sub cm equal to the motion of the center of mass, plus its tangential velocity at this point, which is just going to be tangent to the circle, so V sub t. So at the top, we see that V sub t plus V sub cm the vectors, is simply going to be equal to r omega plus r omega, because those vectors add together, and we end up with 2r 
omega, which is equal to 2 times the velocity of the center of mass at the top. So that's going to be at the very top of the motion. At the bottom, let's see what would happen. We would then have the velocity of the center of mass vector pointing towards the right, just like it is for every point, right? So this point has v sub cm also. This point has v sub cm. So they all have that translational velocity of the center of mass. And then the tangential velocity for this point on the wheel, because the spinning is in this direction, as indicated by omega, is actually going to point backwards. So there would be v sub t, the tangential velocity at that point. And so again, the magnitudes are both, are r omega. And so r omega and r omega, but now they're vector additions, so they point in opposite directions. So at the bottom, we get a very different result. The tangential velocity plus the center of mass velocity vectors is going to be equal to zero. So at the bottom, it's equal to zero because the vectors cancel. You could do this at any point. So for example, if I take the side point here, I drew in the velocity of the center of mass, the translational velocity of the center of mass. I could draw in the tangential velocity at this point, right? Because that would be v sub t. Um, and again, that's just coming from uh, the tangential velocity and given the direction of the rolling motion. So on a side point, as I've drawn here, then I would have the velocity of the center of mass plus my tangential velocity. And so I would then end up actually with these being the sides of a right triangle. And so then the magnitude of v total would just be equal to r omega squared plus r omega squared. And that would then be the square root of 2 times r omega which is the velocity of the center of mass. So really this applies to every point that we just add the two vectors. The most common ones that we think about though are the top where it equals two times the velocity of the center of mass and at the bottom where the wheel touches the ground the instantaneous velocity at that point is zero. All right so moving on now to conservation of energy with rotation. If we look at this, it's going to be the same as conservation of energy without rotation, but we're going to have an additional term now for the fact that we can have energy, kinetic energy associated with our rotational motion. So what we want to show here, or what we want to talk about, um, is how we're going to change our kinetic energy when we do conservation of energy. So our total kinetic energy is not going to just be our translational kinetic energy anymore, kT. It'll also have a kR. So kR is our rotational kinetic energy. And kT is our translational kinetic energy. And so kT is the one that we've dealt with all semester, where we have it's equal to 1 half m times the velocity of the center of mass squared where v sub cm is the speed of the center of mass. So that's the speed of the center of mass of the object. And now we have k rotational. And in rotational world, remember our equations are the same, but we use the analogous term in rotational world. So instead of the linear inertia, the measure of the linear inertia mass, we want to use the measure of the rotational inertia, which is i, our moment of inertia. And instead of our rotational speed, I mean our linear speed, we want to use our rotational speed, omega. So 1 half i omega squared. And we want to recall from what we just did with rolling motion that we can write v sub cm is equal to omega times r. So we can actually write omega as the velocity of the center of mass over r. And this is an important problem solving 
thing to remember because it allows you to relate your omega here to your velocity of your center of mass or your speed of the center of mass here. And so your kt is related to your kr. And so that becomes an important result. All right, the other thing that changes when we do conservation of energy is when we talk about gravitational potential energy being mgh, this becomes mg times the height of the center of mass. So that's a commonly um, missed step where it's the height of the center of mass is what matters. So those are our main changes um, to conservation of energy with rotation. So in order to now look at how our steps will work, basically again you're going to visualize the problem as we always do and you're going to decide on your initial so you're going to visualize the problem and then we're going to decide on our initial and our final for this idea that our total initial energy would equal our total final energy recalling that energy is a scalar. So there's just a single equation of total initial energies equals your total final energies when you include everything in your system. So step two then, right, we write out our initial and final energies. And this is gonna be where there's a one thing to remember when we do problems with conservation of energy with rotation. So we're gonna write out our initial and final energies. And I'll write this as a key note here that's very different than um, something we've encountered before in terms of conservation of energy because we didn't have to worry about rotational motion. So we have two types of rotational motion. One, something might be free to rotate, meaning a, a ball rolling down a ramp, or it might be something that's pivoted. Say I pivot this pen and it's able to rotate this way, in which case I'm constraining its motion by pivoting it. So if we look at the first case, say something that's free to rotate, so it's free to roll or move, um, meaning that it's not in some way constrained, so I'll just say here not pivoted for problem recognition purposes, then you're going to use k total is going to be equal to both your translational kinetic energy of the center of mass and your rotational kinetic energy. On the other hand, if it is pivoted, you've actually now constrained the motion of the center of mass. And so it can be shown that in this case, you only want to say k total is equal to k rotational only. So in this case, you don't use the translational motion of the center of mass if it's pivoted. So that's going to be a very important application. When you look at a problem, you have to decide when you're writing out your initial and final energies, is it something that's constraining the motion of the center of mass? Is it pivoted? And if so, you only use the rotational kinetic energy. It's all in that rotational term. And then, or is it something that's free to rotate? Say a ball rolling um, down you know, the, the hill, a block flying through the air, anything like that. Um, the other note here um, that I will put to remember is to use the height of the center of mass for the UG. And then, as we usually do, you're going to set your sum of all your initial energies equal to the sum of all final energies. You're going to solve and check your answer. All right, so that concludes our video on rolling motion and conservation of energy with rotation. Please let me know if you have any questions.